welcome back. It has been a little bit of time, but this is the next San Francisco event that I was able to go to. It was called Day of the Devs. I went to the one last year as well. This is actually their sixth annual event, I guess you could say. And this one was pretty big. It was still presented by Double Fine, as well as I Am 8-Bit uh, Productions, and the venue was the same. It was still at the Midway here in San Francisco. Real good time. Just amazing software all around and everywhere to be seen. It was really, really awesome. When we went there, all the games and everything that were advertised were just as good as it looked. And if you want to check out any of the games or all the games that were there, check out their website at www.dayofthedevs.com com and you could actually see everything that was there when we started we went in and went to go see the board game area which was kind of new it was i mean it was electronic board games or maybe like an arcade cabinet type deal they had two really popular ones going um one was line wobbler and the other was garden wobble and line wobbler was like you had this joystick that would control the this light as it went up and down the line and then garden wobble was kind of like a different type of twister i guess there, there was different games in it i should say so there was a control box that let you control what type of game you were playing and there was like twister mode and i think it was like pond mode where every time you touch one of the control modules it would ripple out like uh, you're throwing a stone into a pond. As you kind of went outside they had a, a girls make games area which that was pretty awesome. They were a huge sponsor there so they had a huge booth and you could see the game that they were working on. I believe it's a company that does outreach to youths and tries to help girls create games and software and Check out their website, we'll get you more information there. I believe their game was Shredded Secrets was the name of it, but check it out, it's pretty cool. I believe they have a Kickstarter going, I, I don't remember 100%, but if you check out the, the Day of the Devs page, it'll lead to that, which then leads me to, and what I tried out, right next to that outdoor area when you go back indoors, they had a bunch of different games one in particular that stood out to me was uh, The Wild at Heart, which is a Pikmin-like game. It's kind of cool. You'd, you'd roll, roll around in a, in a forest and then you, you'd throw these things that literally look like the Pikmin. Like, I have no other idea of how to describe them. But that was really fun. There was also a game called Creek, and that was just visually beautiful. There's two games that I would, like, argue are the, the most beautiful, and this was my favorite. Lynn liked the, another game, which I'll talk about next, but this game was like based on like an Edgar Allan Poe type deal where it was also, it reminded me of Don't Starve, the art style at least. And here's a sticker that I got from the game creators, which is pretty awesome. And I think it was like some of the little swag that I got from the actual event, but the event's free, so don't really expect anything from it, right? Except for playing games for free. And right next to that would then be the other game that I thought was just visually beautiful was a game called Gris. It looks very similar to a game called Journey, which I believe that was the first game to ever win a uh, Emmy or an Oscar for best like music. And if you haven't played that, I highly suggest it. It is an amazing game. I don't know if the multiplayer part will still work, so that it, the game's a little bit older now, but it's pretty awesome, so <laughs> check it out nonetheless. Then there was also Trover Saves the Universe. That is a Josh Roiland game, the creator of Rick and Morty, and you could totally see the influence. Those are a VR game, so you get to kind of interact with the world. The line was a bit long for that, so I didn't really wait for that to try it out, but that being said, I was able to go next to it and play a game called Samurai Gun 2, which is just the follow-up to Samurai Gun. If you're familiar with that, it's kind of just a four versus battle royale type style. You have a character with a, a gun and a samurai sword. You have three shots and then you'd run around just killing people or, or the other three 
opponents. It was a death match, so it kept, you'd kept respawning. It was a lot of fun. I walked over to take a look at kind of the main sponsors, as well as probably the reason why this year's Day of the Devs was so busy was Square Enix was there and they did Kingdom Hearts 3. And you could check out the game do a little gameplay that like a little demo version. It was graphically beautiful. The line for that was incredible. It was really, really long. It had portions of the line where it said the wait from this point is like two hours. Seeing that kind of just put me off. Uh, I mean, I like Kingdom Hearts, but if I'm gonna play it, I guess I'll just have to buy it. I would hope that the gameplay would be similar to Kingdom Hearts 2 or 1, or at least follow along those lines of just increasing the, the fun. There was another VR game that I, I waited a little while for to play. It was called um, Giant Ghost, or Ghost Giant, I'm sorry. It was this crazy little town where you you would kind of help out the characters in the town do certain things and that was a lot of fun and it actually made me interested in purchasing the ps4 so that was kind of dangerous i guess i think i'll probably try getting an oculus or a the vive first maybe we'll see <laughs> and then um the last thing that we kind of were checking out was piak which is this kind of interesting 2d type platforming game that Lynn was playing and trying to figure out the puzzles. It was kind of neat, it was very simplistic, which was, I believe, what made it interesting, at least to me. And then uh, just kind of the final touch-ups, I would say, was that there was definitely like live music going on in the back next to the Girls Make Games area, as well as uh, food trucks. And the food trucks this year were far better than the food trucks last year. They were still expensive, don't get me wrong, but the selection was a lot wider. I was actually able to get like some food to eat. They choose interesting food trucks, I'll admit. Things that take a little longer to make and maybe they're trying to go for that like hipster type deal, but it didn't really work, I would say. Anyhow, that's just personal opinion. It worked out, the food was decent. I was able to get a meal there, so I wasn't starving and yeah, just a good time all around playing games, but it was a very interesting day. The fact that it's free is amazing and I hope that it stays free for another four years. Let's see if they could get to their, their, their 10th annual without having anyone have to pay. But if it keeps increasing in the amount of people, I would see that a venue change might need to, to happen. And at that point, there might be a, a small cost to entering the development conference, so. Anyhow, these are the great free things that you, you could like run into while you're here in San Francisco and I highly just recommend keeping your eye open to see if something like this pops up near you. Anyhow, that's it for this vid and uh, I'll see you in the next one.